This is the examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. You've, I'm sure, heard the name Menendez Brothers. At least if you've lived in the 90s, you did. If not, maybe a foreign case to you. The story of Lyle and Eric Menendez, two brothers from a wealthy Beverly Hills family accused of murdering their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez, in their home on August 20th of 1989. Brothers initially not considered suspects. They lived lavishly off their inheritance for several months after the murders. After all, Jose Menendez, big record executive, worked with the likes of groups such as Menudo, many others. In 1990, in a therapy session with his psychologist, Eric confessed to Dr. Jerome Ozell that he and Lyle had in fact killed their parents. Lyle subsequently threatened the doctor, leading to the tapes of the sessions being turned over to the police. After a lengthy legal debate over the admissibility of the tapes, the brothers were arrested in March of 1990. The first trial took place in 1993. The defense argued that the brothers had killed their parents out of fear, alleging years of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. The jury in the first trial was unable to reach a unanimous verdict taking into consideration the years of abuse. The jury was split between convicting them of first-degree murder or manslaughter, which showed they believed the brothers' defense to some extent. It took a second trial in 1995, without cameras in the courtroom this time, to render a verdict. The defense's strategy remained the same, but the prosecution argued more strongly that the brothers had killed for financial gain. The second trial, the jury rejected the defense's claims about abuse and fear, and both brothers were convicted of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. In 96, Lyle and Eric Menendez were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Since their conviction, both brothers have expressed remorse for their actions and have claimed that they would have preferred a life with their parents over the life that they live now. When you have a trial like this without the possibility of parole, many appeals that have failed over the years, it seemed forever that the Menendez, the Menendez brothers would likely never see the light of day, never get out of prison until... Carol, of all things that you think may intervene in a trial, I think the last thing I expected was the word menudo to come up. How about you? Or I was going to say Netflix documentary. Well, Netflix documentary has done quite a bit of good for those who have been wrongly accused in the past. But menudo? Oh, this, this was a Peacock documentary, isn't it? It is a Peacock documentary. <laughs> and... And it brings to light some information because when you brought it up to me, I'm like, Menudo, what do they have to do with anything? Mm -hmm. But they do. And this could prove some things that the Menendez brothers had been saying. It, it is because part of the debate that was going on back in 1993 was very much, well, you just did this for money. You had rich parents and you are, uh, you are just, you know, teens that are wanting to get a bunch of money and live this perfect life without your mom and dad. And that's the way a lot of people saw it. Because if you remember back in 1993, we didn't listen to victims all that much. <laughs> Pretty much you're like, well, you didn't listen to authority. So you must be bad, bad people. Um, well, it, it turns out that it really wasn't the boys that were bad, bad people. Maybe they had a reason to kill mom and dad if you're sitting there your entire life being sexually abused by your violent father and you have a mother that stands by and allows it to happen even enabling it to a certain extent yeah i could see and understand where someone may pull a shotgun out at some time and say i can't take this anymore which is essentially uh, what uh, lyle and eric menendez eventually did 
And the new docuseries Menendez plus Menudo, Boys Betrayed, it's revealing claims by former Menudo band member Roy Roselio that he too was sexually abused by Jose Menendez, the Menendez brother's father, who is now deceased. Menudo. So, in, oh, no. I'm sorry. I had a quick question. So none of that ever came up no. in the court hearing nope. that was so publicized. Not at all. I remembered it was everybody was talking about it. No, and, and today I think it would have because people connect the dots a lot better than they did back then. Mm -hmm. We have more resources to do so. But it really wouldn't have taken that long to connect those dots, to be completely honest. Menudo, a prominent boy band, if you didn't know that, uh, they started in 1977. They uh, had uh, issues uh, fa facing sexual abuse allegation against its creator, Edgardo uh, Diaz, in 1991, which cast a big shadow over their fame uh, in the markets, uh, saying that he was... Uh, abusive and if you know anything about the music industry there's a lot of that shit that goes on Roselio alleges he was raped by Jose Menendez in 1984 when he was 14 and a member of Menudo the Menendez brothers recall often seeing Menudo members at their home because at the time uh, the father he was an RCA record executive one time even the head the docuseries follows Roselio's research uh, for people who can corroborate his claims against Diaz and Jose Menendez, while the Menendez brothers contribute from prison via phone. This mm -hmm. in itself yeah. could be new evidence mm -hmm. in this case that could possibly bring an appeal to light and possibly a new trial for a case that we never thought uh, was going to be a possibility. And I do remember at the time that abuse allegations had been brought up, mm -hmm. but nobody really believed them. Yeah. They're rich guys. You know, you dismiss it. You know, they're just wanting money. But it's really sad looking back on it in retrospect. If those things truly happened and everybody just was like, hmm. He didn't do He wouldn't have done that. I think, too, back then, there was more denial about things like that happening. 100%. Than now, where it's kind of every day you hear about things like that happening, which I hate. But it's just, you know, if, if one... And it sounds like, was it Eric was the one really being abused? I don't know. Both of them were. Yeah. But they were so close, the brothers, that... You know, if you're doing it to one, the other one's trying to help you. Everything was swept under the rug back then. Mm. And, and even if you knew nothing about the case, you'd already made your judgment uh, when you would see the news story. I, I remember, like, right. parents being right. like that. It's like, don't they even hear the story. It's just kids. Yeah, they got money. A lot of jealousy going on at that time, too, with people who had money. I mean, that still goes on today. And I think this sort of shit, you know, certainly went on in the past as it does today. We just hear about it more because back then everybody just shut up. Nobody wanted to talk about it. It was much easier to pretend these things weren't happening and, exactly. and tell the kids to be quiet rather than actually deal with the reality of how twisted some of these individuals are or were. And then, you know, I think a lot of things have changed, too. You know, it was a dad abusing sons. Mm -hmm. which of course never happened yeah. back then. But I also think that, you know, the victims were murdered. So there's a lot of sympathy for them. So anything they were going to say was not true because look at the poor victims. This is what ended up with them. These guys just wanted money. Yeah. And so they're selfish, rich boys. That's how they were painted uh, in very the public. Much, in, very much so. At that point in time. And it really depended, you know, at the time where you stood on a lot of issues as to if you even would believe this story whatsoever uh, or their side of the story or the other side of the story. And there really wasn't much analysis of any of it other than just let's, you know, damn who we feel like damning at that day of the week. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be really interesting. I started watching the documentary the other night. I, of course, fell asleep. Uh, but it <laughs> it is, uh, it's a new chapter in this case that has been sitting stagnant for many, many years. Uh, and if you've 
done any research, watched some documentaries on this case over the years, I, I think most sane people will walk away going, these brothers should not be in prison anymore. Maybe manslaughter, maybe should have had some time. You can't murder people. That's not okay. But you also can't rape your kids either and expect there to be no repercussions from it. And at the time, if you were the kid going, my dad is raping me and my he's the fucking head of RCA, guess how far that's going to go? Nowhere. Do you suppose the the guy from Menudo never spoke up? Maybe, or maybe he tried to and nobody listened to him. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, I'm sure it's, it's spelled out in the documentary. It could have been something, you know, there, there's a lot of reasons why victims don't speak up. Uh, shame, uh, one oh of the God, biggest yes. ones. Yes. Um, you know, the, we're talking the music industry here as well. It's like the fucking mafia, and especially back in those days. Uh, you speak up against something or someone, and you are, I mean, he's making his living as a member of Menudo, uh, and he's going to get kicked out by the time he's 16, I believe. That's how they were doing it. 14 or 16, they were changing members. Uh, so it was always a band that was having new people in it uh all young, essentially, young it was, essentially it was child trafficking is really what was going on in the form of a band so i i, I think this is is going to be interesting and i truly truly hope that it does give those brothers a new chance at life because they deserve it and and frankly uh the father deserved a fucking shotgun to himself he deserved every second of that bullet piercing his body for the horrible, horrible human being that he was. So, uh, I I don't know. This is going to be an interesting one to continue watching. It's a case, like I said, that's been dead for a while, but uh, it's, it's interesting how some of these things come back to life. And it could. They could get a whole new trial from it. So, we'll continue to, uh, to watch that one for you right here. If you uh, like the podcast, be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking episodes or discussions on the cases that we're following for you right here. You can get an ad-free experience through Apple Podcasts. My name's Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.